will say this is probably the top 10 that I update the least because they just don't release a lot of safeties in the game. This is free safeties and strong safeties. And it also makes it a little bit hard that some of them are meant to be user slash in the box safeties. And then obviously the coverage guys. I did my best on this one. Remember, it's two different positions, so it makes it a little bit trickier. But if you guys enjoy top 10s like this, I do them for every position. I also do gameplays in a lot of these cards as well. So make sure you hit that like, hit that subscribe, man. We just hit 50K. I want to say I appreciate you guys all once again. But other than that, let's just jump right into number 10. If you are looking for cheap, fast Madden coins to build that God Squad you always wanted, head over to my sponsor, Easy Mutt, and use code CHU for 5% off your order. The link is in the description. So at number 10, we do got this LTD Jeremy Chin, and he beat out a couple players. I will say there's been a lot more safeties newer than him, like I, oh, like Minka Fitzpatrick, for example. We've had guys like Tyron Matthew, the Honey Badger. But Jeremy Chin, still being an LTD, is a lot better than those guys. He also does have a lot of good height on him. 6'3", 98 speed, is was very good at the time. I will say the negatives about him and the reason why he's not higher despite having amazing stats amazing height he doesn't really get that good ability uh, a good of ability discounts i will say a lot of people they, they wouldn't mind this pick artist and also deep zone ko isn't bad but i think as we get later into the game and as we get more dbs everybody the the goat stack i guess you could say on dbs are using a deep zone ko using mid zone and pick artist if you can get it i think people would even rather have both ko's me me too i think that's how exactly how i feel as well i'd rather have deep zone and probably a mid zone right here and then that would make Jeremy Chin much higher and much better on this list but I think if you don't mind not having the mid zone which I'm, I'm gonna be honest I think is personally one of the best abilities in the game then I guess Jeremy Chin could be ranked higher for you but I just couldn't put him any higher because he doesn't get that stack number nine we got the brand new Nolan Cromwell and Nolan Cromwell you'll notice you are losing height you are losing speed but this game is literally ran on abilities we all know that by now and Nolan Cromwell like I said with our guy Jeremy Chin he gets that stack we were talking about I would personally rather have the deep zone and also a combo of the mid zone right here although it is 2 ap on him which isn't the craziest stack in the world it is still better than just having the pick artist in deep zone i know catching the picks is cool but you want to be able to knock out the ball especially when people are catching like like double post is the most popular play in madden this year in the double post if you throw it at a good time and they don't have mid zone it's a catch every time i honestly get super excited when i play people that don't have mid zones on their safeties because it's like a free toss every single time nolan cromwell like i said i'll lose a little bit of speed a little bit of height to get the better the better ability stack every single day now we move to number eight where we are going down in overall i mean you're going down to a 96 overall right here but that just shows you the overall on the card truly does not matter as much as a lot of people think it does he is six foot two 97 speed so you are getting the same speed you're gaining an extra height right there and they have the exact same ability stack and also i know i explained this already so many times i know 90 percent of you guys watching the video already know this but those stats right there although they are better on the other cards as you know this game works off thresholds as long as he's above 90 and all those major stats he's gonna play just as good as the other guys but Simmons like I said one inch taller than Cuamro same exact speed and guess what boys he gets that deep zone and also mid zone right here for the exact same a uh, AP as our guy Cromwell so basically Cromwell with an extra inch man I'll take it so now we move over to number seven where we have one of the hardest cards on the list to grade we have our guy Ed Reed and Ed Reed statistically is not very good at all boys I mean his pursuits not above a 90 he has 96 speed which is absolutely brutal and guess what he is not tall at all I do think this is still a very important card though because he has one of the best ability stacks and still in this game right now as an up top safety you are getting your deep zone and mid zone for one AP combined. It was two AP on Cromwell. It was two AP on Simmons, like I just showed you before. It is one AP on him. But like I said, you are taking some negatives. I mean, he is slow out there. I will say, if you go back and look at some of my team builds, I actually was using him at strong safety with no theme team boost. And he honestly did not play as bad as I thought he would. I would say being a little bit shorter at times, not being too fast is not the greatest combo in the world. Like you'll notice it out there sometimes. But if you can get this guy boosted up in speed or whatever, he could be like a top three, top four safety in the game. But I couldn't rank him any higher. Despite having one of the best ability stacks in the game, I couldn't put him any higher because... I mean, dude, those stats, I mean, the height and the speed are really bad, boys. And now we move to number six, where we have Derwin James, another guy that does not have the best speed in the world, but you are gaining the height. So I will say it's a little bit better over here. You are six foot two, one of the taller safeties on this list. And you can see he is a much bigger body as well. I mean, the pursuit's way better than Ed Reed's as well, which I will say pursuit kind of sucks in this game regardless, especially with the X-Factors and whatnot. But our guy Derwin, man, 
He's good. He's very, very good, and there's a reason why. Once you fully power him up, boys, you do get either Avalanche on all game long or you get Reinforcement on all game long. And if you guys do not know what Reinforcement is, it is basically every single KO on the field. There is a thing that sucks with the Reinforcement, though. It doesn't give you the reaction boost that other KOs do. So, like, mid-zone KO will give you the reaction boost where you can speed up towards the ball. It doesn't give you that. So, what you want to do with him is also stack that with his 0 AP mid-zone. Very, very good, man. You stack that with the 0 AP mid-zone. Then you get your, like, your pick artist right here for 0. You can run a 0 AP stack with him. He is absolutely amazing. Like I said, it's really hard because the speed and whatever is a little bit tough. I will say you will notice it sometimes out there, but Derwin James, man, still one of the best cards in the game, and he came out months ago, man. Now that we head into our top five, we have one of the more underrated cards in the game. He literally just came out last weekend, and I will say they made him strictly a box or a slot corner, I guess you could say. You are using him in the box as a user because of his ability stack. They didn't really give him any good deep abilities. Deep in zone is garbage. I mean, we're in April right now. We need either deep zone or at least minimum deep out. We rather just see deep zone on all these guys deep in is absolutely garbage unless you run cover three every single play and you plan on having him literally in the middle every single time in that cover three but at the end of the day most people aren't going to do that so what you want to do in the box you could either run your pick artist and your mid zone you can see they have copy and paste buckets for them too so you can get pick artist in mid zone ko for double zeros which is insane what that's like the stack fred warner gets right that everybody loves or you could run the pick artist and also tackle supreme so you could stop the X-Factors, or you could be a lot better in pass coverage, man. He is a very, very good in-the-box player, and I think this is a card that a lot of people are sleeping on and definitely want to probably add on the squad. Four, we got Jair Brown, and I'm only having him at number four because the question is, is when he, or the problem is, is there's only one token you really got if you didn't spend money for the, uh, for the present Super Bowl players, and if you use the token on him, he's arguably like the number two safety in the game if you really, really think about it, because if you use the token on him, boys, he goes up to 97 speed, which would be very good on this list. That's like normal for this list, right? But as you guys know, Jair Brown did his, he was the only card out of all the Super Bowl cards that hit his requirements in the Super Bowl, and he ended up getting his deep zone KO discounted to one AP instead of two. So he has that. And then he also has his pick artist for zero. But if you use the token on him, you also get mid, zero, mid zone KO on him all game long for zero. So you would have that goat stack I was talking about earlier, mid zone, your deep zone and pick artist for one AP. That is insane, boys, for a 95 overall card. As you guys know, this is a guy that a lot of people run at corner. A lot of people even use him up top. Jair Brown, despite being a 95 overall, you put that token on him, boys. He goes in one of the best team teams in the game as well. He is, is absolutely amazing. And you could really use this card until the end of the year. It is disgusting. But like I said, it is really tough because there's only really one token out there for most people. So I don't know if I could put him much higher than four right now currently in the game. So at number three, we have the brand new LTD Prez card. And I don't normally do a lot of defensive gameplays, but I actually did one on him yesterday, and he was a lot of fun to use. I will say I do think he is one of the best users in the game, if not the best user in the game. You can see statistically he is absolutely amazing. 99 zone, 99 hit power, 90 man. The pursuit's ridiculous. The tackling, everything is ridiculous on him. He has solid height at six foot one. He is not an up top guy, which sucks because if you're spending, he is 3.2 million right now. He is the most expensive card in the game currently. They made him almost. I don't want to use the word unusable, but he's basically basically unusable up top because if you take a look at his abilities boys deep in zone for one like i said earlier you need deep zone or deep out that is the worst one in the game but his abilities in the box are ridiculous zero ap pick artist and then you can combine that with your mid zone ko so that is exactly what you want to see him and rodney harrison in the box would be absolutely amazing that would make a lot of plays and despite being smaller guys they both have insane impact block yeah, i think his is 97 yeah he's not going to get pancaked in the box as well and he also has avalanche on all game basically or most of the game because you got persistent built in and i know a lot of people are going to get i mean a lot of people might play him up top because it's universal coverage uh aka cruise the thing that sucks about the aka ones though even with persistent is that you're going to have plays with it off and you're going to get exposed on those plays if you're playing a good player they're going to notice that you don't have it on and it could be very very tough to like people are just going to throw it right at you and you're not going to be able to knock the ball out but at the end of the day i think this card as a user he's arguably the best user in the game man his abilities his stats across the board i mean they're basically golden ticket like and at number two, I feel like it's really hard to go away from Kyle Hamilton. He did tank in price because of the number one guy. The number one guy, he got blessed. I mean, that card is absolutely amazing. But Kyle Hamilton is still a very good card. You don't have to use it. So say, 
like multiple, like there's like three strong safeties in the game, right? That you have on your team. You don't have to run them at strong safety. You can move one to free safety. Who really cares on overall? They're still going to play the exact same over there. And that's what you can do with the number one and two guy. I think Kyle Hamilton, although he is six foot four, he is definitely more an up top coverage guy. You can see the 97 sweet. All the stats across the board are amazing on him. But ability wise, I wish he had a little bit better abilities because he would have been number one for a long time. But I do value getting every theme team. These theme teams are becoming more and more popular as well as we kind of been, you know, I, don't, I wouldn't say EA has been negligent on the promo theme teams, but you don't really need them anymore because everybody's 97 or 98 speed, right? So a guy like Kyle Hamilton, you could boost him up easy with the normal theme team. But his abilities, like I said, nothing too insane. I would say deep zone KO for zero is amazing and also pick artist. But like I said, I think having mid zone is really important on your safeties, especially if you want to come down and play any routes in front of you, like seam shots, post routes, anything in the middle. I think mid zone is really good. So it would be three AP for all that, but you are using it on a six foot four giant out there. So I think it's worth it at the end of the day. Kyle Hamilton, a dog, definitely a top three safety, no matter how you want to put it. I think this is one that almost all of us can agree on boys. I know he is a little bit on the shorter end, but they gave him the Jair Brown stack. For no token, you don't have to use a token on him, and he's also 99 base speed. So he is literally Jair Brown, but kind of like on crack, I guess you could say. 99 speed, 99 hit power, 99 zone, 97 man. His play rec is a 98 as well. Troy P has been one of the best coverage guys I've used all year, and I just don't think he's going to leave my team unless we start getting golden ticket cards that also get the stack that are also like six foot five or whatever. But right now, you get the best abilities. You get the best stats. You are also getting some boosts on your teams if you want to use the Steelers chem. I would say you can't put the token on it, but I don't think it's worth it on him. All you're unlocking is Avalanche for the Ring of Honor or the Enforcer Supreme or or you could use universal coverage as well, but you already are getting every single KO in the game. I mean, you are getting mid zone. You are getting your deep zone. Like I said, for one AP, you could end up using flat too. I guess you want, if you threw in the token, you could get all three KOs, I believe. Yeah, no, that is actually insane to think about boys. You can get all three KOs plus pick artists with the token on for one AP. I mean, Troy Palomalu, I don't care about the height. I mean, this guy knocks out literally everything. He has been a playmaker for me. He's one of the hardest hitters on the team right now. He is insane. You can literally play him anywhere in the field. User, slot, up top safety, corner. He can do it all. all right, boys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to comment down below which safeties are you rocking on your squad right now. I think Troy P is one that everybody should have. I love that card. And he's not overly expensive for how good he truly is and how much of a difference he makes on the field. But I hope you guys enjoyed, man. I hope to see you guys in the next one. We got season six tomorrow, man. A big deal, boys. I'll see you guys there. Peace out, man.